the beginning. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker. I call Chris Bishop. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. This is a really important bill uh, on a really important issue. Uh, frankly, it's embarrassing that it's taken a year to move the second reading, because I was a member of the Justice Committee in the last Parliament. Uh, this bill was referred to us, was introduced on the 15th of March uh, 2017, first reading on the 11th of April. Uh, kind of at the tail end of the last Parliament, we considered it, a number of very serious submissions from very august bodies. We reported the bill back uh, on the uh, 15th or the 16th of August uh, 2017. Now, no one would expect Parliament to consider uh, the bill on the 16th of August. In fact, I don't even think, I think it might have been the very last act of the last Parliament uh, before the election on the 23rd of September. But fair enough to assume some progress would have been made between August 2017 and September 2018, but yet none has been made. So I agree with um, the remarks of the Honourable Minister Stuart Nash about uh, the importance of working in a bipartisan way across the parliament about how we all need to take uh, family violence uh, extremely seriously. Uh, it would be nice if the government uh, provided some impetus uh, through the legislative programme for that uh, themselves. So that's, that's my first point around the delay. I also want to deal with the integrated safety response pilot, which he made much mention of. And he said, well, I've sat on an integrated safety response panel, and I've seen the great work that it does. No one in Christchurch has died as a, res as a result of family violence since the ISR was introduced. Well, that, that uh, initiative came out of the uh, cross-government work uh, that the last our government was, in, was involved in and was engaged in across various different ministers. And Stuart Nash said triumphantly, you know, we meet weekly, you know, as if this was some like grand achievement that ministers yeah, meet yeah. weekly. Actually, uh, you know, if he's only just discovering in the last, you know, today, a year in, that ministers meet on a weekly basis to discuss things, I think he's got a few issues. But there's not an achievement meeting weekly. Actually, outcomes are, are what matters. That's right. uh, this, these guys in the government love the meetings. We just had a $1.5 million summit, which was a very large meeting. Uh, you know, actually, the meetings are all well and good, but you need to get the outcomes. And the ISR came out of the various meetings that the previous government did. And Stuart Nash says, well, I've sat on a panel well. Um, and he said, well, we welcome the opposition support for the integrated safety response panel. Well, I tried to go and sit on a panel uh, in Christchurch. I arranged it. Uh, it was all uh, due to be arranged. And just literally 45 minutes before I was due to go uh, and sit on the panel to, to see you know, firsthand for myself uh, as a member of the Justice Committee and an opposition spokesperson for police uh, exactly uh, how it worked. The meeting was cancelled by the Minister's office. So, look, no. I welcome Stuart Nash's uh, call for bipartisanship and for uh, cholera across the Parliament in order to make sure we take this problem seriously. I completely agree with him. It would be nice uh, if he actually backed that up with actions, and I'm looking forward to the next request to go and visit the ISR being approved uh, by him rather than cancelled. He also needs to get to grips with his portfolio because the integrated safety response is funded out of vote police. It's not a budget bid from Jan Logie, which is what he said would happen as undersecretary. It's a vote police funding line. He doesn't even know his own portfolio. And the reality is the fund... Point of order, Clayton Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Look, uh, you've been very clear in your rulings on people speaking to the bill, and you had a quid pro quo in relation to a tit for tat at the start that has been now um, it's been seen around the House as the way to move forward. And for the last three minutes, we've heard a, a rant that hasn't been anything to do with the bill. It's been somewhat personal on an attack to the Minister. Speaking to the point of order. Um, Speaking to the point of order. I've spent about as much time talking about integrated safety response as the previous minister did. Yeah, um, the, the difficulty that I have is that the previous minister didn't actually address the bill either and talked generally uh, and raised a whole number of points which this speaker is now addressing. So they're already on the floor. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually wondering whether anyone in the House has actually read the bill and understands it and is going to speak to it. But I call Chris Bishop. Well, well Madam Speaker, I will, I'll take you up on your invitation because I, I have read the bill and, as I say, I sat on the Select Committee uh, in the last Parliament. I'm very proud to be a member uh, of the Justice uh, Committee. was the Justice and Electoral, now it's the Justice Committee. I want to talk about the name, uh, the, uh, the name of the bill, and in particular the reference to Farno, because one of the 
One of the interesting issues we considered, and this was, if you read the Select Committee report, you can see that the Labour Party minority view, uh, it, as, as there was a minority view, was to delete uh, the reference to whānau, and it's Māori Language Week, uh, Te Wiki o te Reo, uh, and uh, so it's appropriate we have a debate about that, because there was a view that came through through some submitters that the reference to whānau in the bill was inappropriate. Uh, and I think you can have a legitimate debate about that. I, I, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that. Uh, but the Labor Party certainly uh, backed that view through their minority reports. It's interesting to see whether or not they are going to change uh, the name through that, through that deletion. The second thing about the name, uh, Madam Speaker, is we had an interesting debate in the Select Committee about uh, the word family and particularly the reference, or whether or not there should be a reference to domestic violence. Because at the moment, the Act is the Domestic Violence Act 1995, and it's quite outdated. It's now 23 years old. And this uh, bill uh, seeks to essentially replace the Domestic Violence Act by reference to family uh, violence. That's the new term. The new uh, uh, nomenclature is family violence. Um, and there were some submitters who turned up and said, well, we don't actually see any problem with keeping the phraseology of domestic violence. Uh, there's nothing wrong with because it's, it's violence that occurs largely in the, in the home. It's, it's family violence uh, in, in the domestic setting. So we should call it domestic violence. And there were other submitters who came and said to us that, and I found this submission very interesting, uh, the, the reference to domestic implies and indicates that it's something that should be off limits to the criminal law. That uh, when people talk about a uh, husband and a wife uh, or, or family having, having a domestic, people used to talk about that. It's an old-fashioned term now, but it's actually where, probably where the Domestic Violence Act 1995, 1995 uh, got its logic from. People would talk about having a domestic, and when they talked about having a domestic, they meant, you know, that's something that's nothing to do with me as a bystander or nothing to do with me as the neighbour next door or nothing to do with me as the person down the street who sees a woman go to the dairy with a black eye. They're just having a domestic. And it implies that that's something in the private sphere uh, that the state shouldn't pay any attention to. And more importantly than that, it implies it's something that wider society should not have a view on or pay any attention to, or report to the police, or report to a, uh, an agency uh, that helps uh, people who are victims of family violence, in most cases, women. So actually, you might say, OK, um, what's in a name? Actually, the name matters. And that, you know, I, I freely admit I went into the Select Committee process at the start thinking, why are there so many submissions about the name, family, or domestic, or whanau, or whatever? And actually, it became very clear through the submissions that it really mattered to the people at the front line dealing with this, uh, and it was really important. And I listened to all the submissions, uh, and I listened to, 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 the, to the various um, arguments put either way. And actually, I, uh, I strongly agree that we should not call it domestic violence. It is not something that is just a domestic, that neighbours and communities and society should have no interest in, and the state should not have any interest in. Family violence is a crime. Family violence is a social scourge, and it is absolutely right that the state takes an interest in that. And actually, one of the most remarkable, or one of the, the most excellent things uh, about the change in New Zealand society over the last uh, 15 to 20 years is that we don't really refer to domestics anymore. That, term, that terminology has, has become passe. We talk about family violence. And having an act that is called the Family Violence Act, or at least not the Domestic Violence Act, is actually really important. So that deals with what I didn't think would be a vexed issue <laughs> of the name, but actually it is. Um, in terms of the other really important changes, other speakers have sort of canvassed some of the changes. We've recommended as a select committee making um, a series of changes to the bill as introduced. Not, not, I don't think you would say they're uh, outrageously wild changes to the bill. They're not, they don't really go to the substance. They largely, and the select committee report endorses 
the direction of travel, but there are some uh, minor changes that are important. So, for example, with protection orders, we've recommended simplifying the age-based distinctions in the Act um, to allow children aged 16 years and over to choose whether to make an application for protection order in their own name or through a representative. Um, we have uh, recommended including a provision to enable a judge to interview a child at any stage in the process That's if right. the judge deems it necessary uh, or desirable. Uh, that's uh, through, you know, because the courts are very intimidating to anyone, but particularly uh, to children. So this is all about allowing children to better express their views. We've made some uh, recommendations around the quite complicated issue of information sharing and disclosure between family violence agencies right. and social service uh, practitioners. So it was a pleasure to serve on the committee considering this bill. Um, I would have liked to have seen it come back before the House for a second reading before now, uh, but it's here now, and I'm looking forward to its passage through the House in the coming weeks and months. Yeah. Mr Speaker. Uh, ka Jenny Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to...